What does a contraction feel like? How do I know if I'm in labor? And what does a day of labor look like? Wait, is this normal? Hey, I'm Heidi. My best friends call me Hydes. I'm a certified birth doula, host of this podcast, and author of Birth Story, an interactive pregnancy guidebook. I have supported hundreds of women through their labor and deliveries, and I believe every one of them and you deserves a microphone and a stage. So here we are. Listen each week to get answers to these tough questions. Birth Story, where we talk about pregnancy, labor, deliveries, where we tell our stories and share our feelings. And of course, chat about our favorite baby products and motherhood. And because I'm passionate about birth outcomes, you will hear from some of the top experts in labor and delivery. Whether you are pregnant, trying desperately to get pregnant, or you just love a good birth story, I hope you will stick around and be part of this birth story family. You guys, my book is out. I mean, it is out in the world. I cannot believe it. I have been writing it for several years, and it's just mind-blowing. Birth Story, Pregnancy Guidebook and Journal is a -a one-of-a-kind discovery into your pregnancy that provides you education through storytelling. So what's it really about? In the 16 years that I have served women with every personality type, I noticed there was a huge disconnect between what my clients were craving for childbirth education in a book and the books that were actually available on the market. There seemed to be unlimited resources If you are looking for an unmedicated birth or a natural birth or a home birth, but there just weren't a lot of resources for my clients who were part of the 92% of women birthing in a hospital and very much open to medical interventions like an epidural, nitrous oxide, and opioid medications. So I wrote that book to fill the gap for you. Week by week throughout your pregnancy, you will engage with material meant to educate and empower you as you plan for your own birth story, hospital, medicated, unmedicated, or something in between. You are welcomed each week with a postcard from the womb, which is an adorable note from your baby about their miraculous development, as well as the amazing changes occurring within you. Then you are invited to use an uplifting birth affirmation and to respond to an introspective journaling prompt to document your feelings, curiosities, and wonders every single week. With room to memorialize your own birth story, this book will become a memory keeper and a legacy gift for your baby. You are encouraged to read one of my favorite birth stories each week filled with childbirth education, tidbits, and explanations of important medical terms and procedures. These are real-life accounts shared with permission from the births that I've attended during my career as a doula, and I gave you a great mix. In the 42-week guide to your pregnancy and 42 birth stories, seven of them end in cesarean section. About half are unmedicated and the other half are medicated deliveries. This is a judgment-free book. So take what you need from each element and leave the rest. Okay, are you ready to buy? I would love for you to go to birthstory.com and buy it directly from me. But I totally get it if you're an Amazon girl. You can head to amazon.com and just type in birth story pregnancy and the book should pop up. I'll deliver it straight to your doorstep. And I would venture to say that you might be an audiobook kind of woman because you're listening to a podcast. So if you would prefer to listen to this book, then I have recorded it and it is available for download at audible.com or on your Audible app. Thank you for being part of the birth story community. I am so excited for you to have this book in your hand once you've purchased it and it has arrived. I hope that you will give me your thoughts and feedback and don't forget to take a selfie with your book and post it on Instagram and tag at birth story podcast. Are you guys ready for another daddy boot camp? Oh my gosh, these are three of my favorite dads from 2019. Justin, Chris, and Kaz. And this is going to be split into two parts. 
you have to hang in for both episodes too. We recorded for over three hours. I had all three dads crying, opening their hearts out because they want to teach you and your spouse or your partner right now about what it's like transitioning into parenthood and fatherhood through pregnancy, through labor, through delivery, and all of the ways in which their birth stories unfolded. Welcome to the Birth Story Podcast, Daddy Boot Camp. I've got three of my new dads. I was... Well, I was supposed to be all of their doulas, but we'll get into why I wasn't really one of their doulas in a minute. And so first, let's just start. Let's introduce who you are, who your wife is, and then how old your baby is. Go ahead, Justin. Thank you for inviting me. I'm I'm super excited about this all day. Uh, My name is Justin Drumright. Uh, My wife, Kelly Kors, is her maiden name. I'm a Kelly Drumright now. And our son was born on May 27th, and his name is Grayson Keith Drumright. I lost that battle. I I really wanted Tristan. Um, She makes fun of me because of the movie Legends of the Fall with Brad Pitt. (laughs) I wanted to name him Tristan. I like it. Well, yeah. She tells me when she has a drink, she'll tell people this and then proceed to make fun of me for an hour in front of anybody that'll listen. But um, went with Grayson and I lost my father unexpectedly three years ago. So that's where Keith came from. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good family name. So the next one just needs to be Tristan. Yes. Well, he needs to be a boy too. Yeah. There's there's two things going on there. (laughs) I only know how to make boys. So I'm like, yeah, it's obvious you're going to have another boy. Yeah. Tell us what do you do? I work for a healthcare company. We basically build hospital labs from a chemistry, hematology, immunoassay. We put the automation tracks in and all the instruments that hook up. And then we do the uh, software. Um, that's why I was curious what you were telling me earlier about your job into their LIS or EMR. So most people know it as your electronic medical record. Okay, cool. Um, do that and, all over the Southeast. And one of the things we're going to get into is paternity leave. So what what does your paternity leave look like at your company? So mine was a whopping two weeks. Okay. So I, it, it worked out well. I actually went back after, let's see, five, eight days. So they, they let me okay. keep two, and I'm, I'm still going to use them later this year. But um, Kelly had three months. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. So a lot of people that I interview have zero right. <laughs> paternity leave. So I'm like, two weeks is really good. Yeah. So cool. All right, let's move on. I'm directly facing Chris, so I'm going to be staring at you the entire time. Perfect. Who are you? So my name is Chris Ray, and my wife's name is Jessica. Jessica Marshall is her maiden name now, obviously Jessica Ray. And we had our son on August 28th. So he's six weeks old now, and his name is Ethan Marshall Ray. I work for a company called Ring Central. We do unified communications as a software. So we provide communication solutions to enterprise businesses. And I got eight weeks uh, for paternity leave. So it was, yeah, uh, yeah it was well, awesome. cheers that. Yeah. yeah. So they, uh, yeah, really good benefits. Great company to work for. So, so you're going to go back to work tomorrow, right? Yeah. And so then... we can take the eight weeks and split it up however we want. So decided to, do, we're going through, we, we made a really big announcement actually last week that we, we put about $500 million investment into an existing company. Um, so I felt like it's time to go back. I lead our customer success segment for our majors group from Denver East, and I have Canada as well. So my the managers that, that are on my team manage all of our customers. So with that type of growth, I don't want to miss out. I'm trying to position yeah. myself, you know, to to stay there and succeed. So I'm going to go back and then I'll take a week when uh, we're going to go to the mountains after little guy gets his immunizations and then... Uh, from, I'll take a bunch of time off around the holidays when we slow down. So cool. I like that you have the ability and that flexibility to kind of use some of it, you guys, and then use some of it later. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's neat. Awesome program. So four month old, six week old, and then we've got Cass. So tell us about you. Yeah. So my name is uh, Cass Sneathan. Uh, my wife is uh, Christina Mango. Is her maiden name is Mango, and obviously her name is Christina Sneathan. Now my daughter Kennedy. Kennedy Louise Sneathan is three months old. Uh, she was born on July 4th, 2019. So, um, yeah, a little, nice. little firecracker baby. Yeah. So that was Memorial Day. So we've got a uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. holiday, holiday time. Babies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my um, paternity policy was pretty much kind of you just do your thing, be with your wife, be with your kid. We're not really going to track it. What I do is a little bit unique, kind of a, a niche to the market, I guess you could say. I work with charter schools across the state of North Carolina. So I travel to anywhere from Cherokee, North Carolina to Greenville, North Carolina, working specifically with charter schools, go on campus, teach them how to utilize a program called Power School. So 
it was during our busy time of the year that uh, that Kennedy was born. And so I had all my trainings booked July and August. August is like slam packed because when the schools aren't in session, they want to do their trainings. So, yeah, that was an interesting position because I, I was there on the road two weeks after Kennedy was born back on the road while, you know, Christina was adjusting to life with the little one at home. Yeah, but uh, my wife actually had six weeks of maternity leave. She actually got hired on a new job that she could not turn down while she was six and a half months pregnant. Wow. Someone kind of approached her and said, you should apply for this job, and she did, and they wanted her, and and long story short, she worked for about six weeks and then got pregnant, and then not got pregnant, but then had the had Kennedy, <laughs> and then you know, it was a real quick turnaround. There. I yeah. really that hiring person, I really like I'm like when people you. invest in women mm-hmm. that are pregnant because it's, they know that they're going to be performers when they get back. So, it's well, super this, awesome. This brings up my very first question to you guys is talking about getting pregnant because. It sounds like if you could have planned like the perfect time to have gotten pregnant and then delivered, it wouldn't have been delivering during your busy season. Yeah, so it really wouldn't have been. Yeah. Tell me about that journey. Like, did you guys have a planned pregnancy, an unplanned pregnancy? And I'm talking, I'm asking Cass first, since he was just mentioning about the birth of his daughter, Kennedy, and his busy season. So how'd that go? So uh, my wife and I have been together at that time, about six years when we got married on New Year's Eve. And uh, yeah, another holiday there. Yeah. So I just I keep the I dates. Married. I keep the really are you <laughs> yeah, serious? I got married New Year's Eve too. <laughs> you, keep, like, you keep the fun. dates holiday specific. Yeah, exactly. So you know so you don't forget. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And everybody's celebrating with you. <laughs> so um, I like the party energy in this room. There yeah, we go. <laughs> exactly. So so the, right after we both knew that we wanted to start trying. And so we did and it took a little while and there were, you know, some hiccups along the way and we were just open to whenever it was going to happen, it was going to happen. Um, my wife did go to some doctors and get some get put on some different things to help, you know, hormonally and all of that good thing. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it, it was successful. We, it worked out. But yeah, it was just we, were, we weren't really planning anything like, hey, let's get pregnant this month. It was more of just, you know, whenever... God wants it to happen, it'll happen. And, uh, you know, we just tried our hardest. I really did. <laughs> really tough job. I'm like, really yeah, tough really job was, you right know. there. Really feel bad for you. So guys. you <laughs> conceive naturally. I mean, well, I mean, Christina conceived naturally. <laughs> right, right. Yes, so you yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to move over to Chris. Yeah. I know your story is a little bit different. So do you mind sharing yeah, with no, us like no. how you kind of how you met Jess and how you decided to become parents and kind of what your journey looked like? Yeah, I don't know if I should share the story how I met her. <laughs> um, no, we actually got introduced by a mutual friend so, who connected us on Facebook. And I've never have been a friend with someone that I haven't met. So I can't remember if I sent her the request or she sent me, but I accepted. And then, and I'm I'm older, right? I'm 42, so I'm a little bit older. She's she's younger than me than I am. Cradle and, robber. Yeah, right. And I had been I was at the Whitewater Center with because uh, I moved here from from the Washington D.C. area um, about four years, almost five years ago. And I was at the Whitewater Center, and my car was at the Ice House, which used to be in South End. And my friend dropped me off in my car and I lived there. And I couldn't drive. I was like, I'm going to walk home. And the friend. Because you had been drinking too yeah, much? All day. Oh, okay. Yeah. All day. <laughs> and the friend that introduced us sent me a text and said, Hey, we're watching the World Cup at Ice House. And I was like, Oh, cool. I'm in the parking lot. So I walked in and I was like, Tony Soprano had my shirt unbuttoned down. So like, I didn't even realize it. Like, it was bad. And Jess was there. And we, I think we started talking because she had been to Ireland. I'd been to Ireland. Something weird. And she gave me a ride home. And that's how we met. And were you like, you friend requesting me on Facebook? Yeah, we're like, I think like we met her dad had unexpectedly passed away around that time. And I think that's her friend thought that we would have, you know, that we have a lot in common. And so that's how we got it wasn't it was kind of a setup. It was. Um, so, yeah, I walked in and I was like, hey, Facebook, yeah. I mean, to my best recollection. And then we had great conversation. And then we were like, after that moment, we were always together, but we weren't dating really. Um, yeah, I was, I, you know, I was coming off a divorce, moved to Charlotte, didn't know anyone. Uh, it was a rough time. So I wasn't in the good like headspace. Uh, Failure she, to commit. Yeah, absolutely. It was, okay. but I was upfront. Like I was honest, like I just, I'm not like, I was trying to figure myself out. Okay. Um, and I took my time trying to do what was right. And then we were, geez, we just had our third anniversary in August of this year. So we, right after getting married in 16, we started trying. And I think 
I think we might actually have gotten like conceived on our honeymoon. So we're very fortunate that we were able to, but we, we lost that baby. And then we had two more losses after that. So our process was different. It was really a struggle, not kind of understanding our faith is very important to us and kind of did God not want us to be parents? Did we need to adopt? We weren't quite sure what to do. Um, So we went through the whole gamut of everything and no one could figure out what was wrong. So we weren't, it's undiagnosed infertility, even though you can get pregnant, which is kind of weird, right? So there's a lot of like blaming of, you know, I think Jessica thought that it was her fault and I thought that it was my fault and we did everything like fractionalized DNA testing on me and everything you could finally or, or think of doing we went through and that it's so that's and we're, I'm assuming you were at a fertility specialist. Yeah, we were at one in Charlotte and I was a big fan of the doctor and I'll always credit Jess for doing this. She had like she thought that she needed to get a second opinion. Okay. And I was like, come on, she went to Duke, you know, I mean, it's like she's a well-respected physician in the field, um, but wanted to support her. And the second doctor that we went to, um, she kind of had some thoughts of what it might be and wanted to do exploratory surgery. And basically she determined that she determined what the issue was, what the previous physician had ruled out as not being an issue, was not existing. Wow. Um, so that was like a big a big moment for us. And it was, I'll, I'll never forget, it was probably a week before. And she was really, I mean, she'd been poked and prodded and tested three years, you know, like taking off time from work and getting monitored and doing all this crazy stuff. And we, we hadn't dig too much into IVF yet, but we weren't sure if that was an option for us. Like we were kind of trying to like navigate what we, what we were comfortable with. Because and, after the uterine surgery, right, then she was, yeah. able like they were saying like because we did the surgery now we believe she'll be able to carry to term right so it wasn't that positive like it, it's it wasn't as definite as that statement what it was okay. so we we got to the point where she was like i don't know if i want to have the surgery i don't know if i want them to go and see if they're like if they can determine what the issue is physically if there is something in there okay and i said i totally get it whatever whatever you want to do is what we're going to do right it's not my body so yeah support her 100%. And she woke up and she was like, God told me last night, I'm going to do the surgery. Because when we went to bed that night, we were not having the surgery. And wow. we started looking at adoption and trying to think what other opportunities, you know, we, we might be able to um, to explore. And she woke up that morning and she's like, I don't know if it was a dream or God speaking to her, or whatever, but she was determined that we're going to go in and do it. So she was in surgery for 15 minutes and our doctor came out and she had pictures and everything. And she's like, there is a uterine septum, which our previous physician said there was not. And she showed me pictures. And she's like, I resected it and this and all this stuff. And she was like, she was really animated and excited. And I'm like, so this has got to be good news. So surgery was supposed to take an hour. It was like 20 minutes and they were done. So Jess, since she's in the recovery, you know, trying to be like, this is awesome news. Like, what does this look like? We have to wait two weeks before we go back to make sure everything's healed up. And then the doctor was like, okay, so you can start trying. This was October. You can start trying in December and then come back in like March and we'll talk about IVF or next steps or whatever you guys want to do next. So that's, it's like, you're super high. Like, oh geez, we found out what might be the issue, but there's no, right. There's no finality to it. Like this is absolutely what's going to fix or not that anything was broken, but this might give you the opportunity to go beyond. I think the farthest we got was 12 weeks. So like super excited and then kind of like, oh, geez, what are, are we going to like, how long can we keep going through this cycle? Because the, the stress it puts on the relationship is I'm sure everyone, you know, but it's, it's, it can be devastating if you aren't careful the way that you treat it. And December comes around. So we start trying again and Christmas Eve, no, it's Christmas morning, I believe. We were doing Christmas with her mom and her sister were coming over for breakfast and she wakes up that morning and she's like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, okay, it's Christmas Eve. How do you know you're pregnant? She's like, I don't know. I just think I'm pregnant. And I'm like, there's no way that the art miracle would be this amazing, right? Like, I'm I'm a Christmas nut. Like, I'm about that to put cool. my tree up tomorrow. This just reinforces <laughs> one more holiday. Right. Yeah, right. let's just Which is super weird. Going. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, this would that would be amazing. It, in my heart, I kind of, I was, we'd been de- like defeated so many times. It's like, there's, it's just, we're just not. So she takes pregnancy test and it's one of those tweeners. Like it's not, it's not pink. It's not, is that a line? I don't know. I think it's a line. Do you think it's a line? 
so doctor's open. She goes to the doctor. And they well, take they, her blood. Yeah, I think they called and they said, come in now. So she's like running and she's like, can you get breakfast ready? I made like a casserole. This is like, like our Christmas celebration expression. Yes, and everything. And I'm like, okay, like, how, how does this work? So she runs to the doctor, gets her blood drawn, comes back home. Her mom and her sister arrive. We do breakfast. And in the middle of it, she gets a phone call. And she's very, she answers the phone. She's like, hello, which is kind of not her style. So immediately her sister's like, what the hell is like, what's going on? I was like, oh, I think it's work. I'm pretty sure that's what I said, which is ridiculous because it's for, for yeah. a bank. Yeah, <laughs> no one in a bank works the month of December. So she goes upstairs. She's on the phone for like five minutes. She comes down. She's like, and I'm like, oh my God, we're pregnant. And she's like, go upstairs. And she's like, yes. So that's how we found out we were pregnant. And the, that was amazing, right? Like the greatest gift you could ever imagine. But then it's right back to where mm-hmm. we've been the three previous times. Yeah. Like, okay, this is awesome. But when, when do we lose, like, when do we lose the baby? Were you guys both thinking that and communicating about it? Or were you guys just processing for 12 weeks individually? So I would say we processed it individually. But my processing was done internally. Like, I feel it's, there's, I didn't have anyone to commiserate with or talk with. And I felt like a real strong sense that I had to be like the pillar of support and take, be there and listen to everything she had because it's different for her. Right. So I, I battled with, and I have a couple of buddies who I think could empathize and sympathize and I would talk to them, but I still, it wasn't what I, it's probably not what I needed. And I, I don't think I did my, my mental health, right. Any, any favors by trying to be the hero as it was for her. But anytime she, you know, there was like her stomach was upset or there was something wrong. But I mean, I know she did because she would verbalize it and I would be strong and try to be positive and be like, no, this is, we, this is, this is different. This is the way it's going to be. But a lot of the times it's not the way I felt. Right. And that was hard because then I, you don't want to be disingenuous and feel like you're being dishonest, but I'm also trying to do what I think is best for for our family, for the unborn child and for her. And so do you guys feel like you had a moment in time where you celebrated the pregnancy? Like how some people pee on a stick in there, you know, or get their blood drawn yeah. and their experience, you know, maybe like Christina and Cass, like maybe theirs was like, yeah, high five, you know, like, did you have that moment at some point in your pregnancy? We, we, we had a few like snippets of it, but we never got that. And we talk about it all the time how we never had that joy that a lot of people do. Which is weird because then you start to feel like you feel that you missed out, right? And then you feel selfish because you, you, how fortunate are, are we to have a baby when mm-hmm. so many people don't ever get that opportunity? Mm-hmm. Um, but then you also s- start to take friends and family and be like, that sucks that they got to do that. And then you're like, geez, wow, how vain am I for being like bitter at people I love because they got to have this this experience that was different than ours. And I you, we really had to talk through that and get to a mature place to be like, it's okay to feel that way, right? We're human beings. We can have those feelings. That doesn't make us bad. But how do we use that? How do we like, you know, how do we turn it into something positive? How do we embrace our story and embrace the journey that we've been on? And I think after like we did the, yeah. the sex reveal, that was a big thing for, I think, us to do with like family and friends. Because we had told my parents and her mom and her sister on the second loss and we got an ultrasound because she felt like something wasn't quite right. And in the elevator, she started to miscarriage after the ultrasound and everything was great. So that type of like hit was like brutal. So every time we went to, you know, to get an ultrasound or go see the doctor, it was just like, it was, it was, it was heavy for a while. And then, yeah, I think we, we celebrate the difficult and the struggle that we've been through. And I think through this, we both made a commitment, especially her to be open and honest and really be advocates for people, especially women can be absolutely brutal to each other. What I found in not talking about miscarriage and not talking about infertility or unintentionally being judgmental about those things and thinking that it's like, you know, something wrong with someone's body or some, I mean, it's, it can be just, it's, it's a dark and like lonely, lonely place. Not something I would ever have, really thought about until like going through it. And then men don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. Women don't talk about it. Society doesn't talk about it. It's like this thing. And then if I, if I hear of someone that has a loss and I hear somebody else say, which I, so many people said to my wife, Oh, I had a friend. She had nine miscarriages and now she has eight kids. I mean, it's unbelievable. Everybody has a miscarriage. Every that's great. That doesn't, 
that doesn't not lessen everybody. No, I was going to say, right. I'll jump in. Everyone does not have a miscarriage, right? right? 75% of people don't have a miscarriage. And it's crazy that people think, even if, so is that they, that's how they think that they can comfort someone, right? Right. It's the farthest thing from comforting anyone to, if you're going to try to make someone feel bad, when someone has cancer, you just say, that sucks. I'm sorry. Like you, like yeah. don't try to mitigate, right. Or diminish their loss by saying it happens all the time. We, our culture is really terrible at dealing with grief mm -hmm. and talking about grief, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. And one of the things that you said that really struck me is like, then you find out you're, you're pregnant again, mm -hmm. right? And huge highs, you know, huge and high, but, <laughs> but you're still working mm -hmm. through grief. So like we can have joy and grief going on simultaneously. And those things continue to be at battle with each other often until the actual birth, Absolutely. you know, of the baby occurs. So I have a question I'm going to come back to on that. But I want to hear Justin's story of conception and kind of like when you decided you wanted to have a baby and what that journey looked like for you and Kelly. Oh, boy. So... Kelly, when Kelly gets something in her head, it's going to happen. Like, Kelly just gets things done. That's just who she is <laughs> as a person. So um, we got married New Year's Eve three years ago, and I, I wanted to start having kids pretty quickly. Um, I'm, uh, Kelly's two years older than me, and, uh, you know, we weren't up against the biological clock, but, I, you know, we'd been together six years. Like, let's, let's just do this thing, you know? And we didn't fight about it, really, but we had some direct discussions for, you know, nine months to a year. And then what, I feel like just sometimes with Kelly, it clicks. And I feel like she woke up one day. I was like, we're having a kid. Like, cool. So you <laughs> wanted to have a baby first. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I was it's interesting. One. You're younger. Right. And you wanted to have a baby first. Hmm. You're just like all those stereotypes <laughs> knocking them down right there. He's well, the one man who's actually more mature than uh, <laughs> an, an older, older woman. woman. <laughs> yeah. He's the, he's I the unicorn. Yes. Well, I, I, I tell you, it, it really is personal for me because um, – like I come from a broken home, lost my father really early, um, just 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 a broken home. And me and my brother are best friends, like inseparable. We talk probably once, twice a day on the phone, have been like that since we were probably 16 and 14. And I always hoped to give like I wanted to have kids to give them the opportunity to have that relationship that me and my brother did. So that's why I pushed it and pushed it because I knew – you know, going to Chris's story that there's probably going to be some problems, you know, let's hope there's not, but we could run into some, to some stuff. So, uh, yeah, I pushed it and pushed it and that's not really fair. I encouraged, encouraged yeah. I encouraged it, encouraged it. And, um, we got pregnant. We're pretty sure New Year's Eve, I mean, a uh, Christmas Eve, nice. uh, the, the first time at about four thirty in the morning. Wow, that's pretty accurate. I love it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like I said, you know, when Kelly gets something in her head. So for for the past couple of years when my dad was still alive, I would – we would get up. We would drive the six hours to Pittsburgh from – I would spend two or three days in Pittsburgh with her mom. Her dad lives in Florida. I'd spend two or three days with her mom, drive at the crack of dawn on Christmas Eve to Richmond. My mom lives in uh, Curry Beach, North Carolina. They would drive to Richmond because my stepdad's kid's mother live in Richmond too. So for years, we've done Christmas literally in a hotel suite. Like they cook in a – like a – a Fairfield in suites or whatever, you know, that has a kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, like we cook and we, we all play poker. So we play two or three games of poker, you know, the wines hit heavy. And then we wake up the next day and go to dad's. And then I drive to the farm and then stay for a few days with my brother and finally get to relax, you know, because I've been driving them down the East Coast right. and then I come back to Charlotte. But I tell you that story because she was ovulating and we were going to have sex that day before I left for three days, period. It just wasn't an option. So <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So when she decided that she was going to have a baby, yeah. I'm assuming she started doing ovulation testing because she was serious about it. Heidi, you have no idea. <laughs> no she take her idea. temperature too? A basic thermometer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it, it's unbelievable. I mean, she is such a planner and so organized and everything is such a scheduled routine. I mean, it's amazing. I think she knew within about 20 minutes when she started ovulating. I mean, it was, it was, that's just Kelly. Yeah. So we got pregnant the first time, found out, you know, a couple weeks uh, later when we we're back in Charlotte and everything. And unfortunately we lost that one at nine weeks. 
So, you know, I was sitting here listening to Chris and I don't I, like it, it's uh, nothing that he went through. What, But some of the emotions as he was talking about really hit home for me. It's you want to be strong and you want to tell her it's OK and, you know, be there for her. But you're literally like going crazy inside. I had an episode in Food Line where somebody just rubbed me the wrong way and I lost in the line at Food Line. And it was like the day wow. after. Two days after uh, the gas company, like I just got sod done, put, you know, in the front yard. The gas company comes in, doesn't even knock on the door and rips up my front yard and lays a gas line now. Oh. And I lost it on him in the front yard. Brutal. So, you know, and I, I'm like, just, I don't want to use, um, like I'm hurting bad inside. And I, I didn't have anybody to really talk to about it. You know, my An brother, outlet for yeah, those emotions. But, you know, one of my groomsmen has two beautiful kids, never had a, you know, miscarriage or anything. He breathes on her and they're pregnant. Uh, another groom's in my wedding. Uh, he's not married yet. Uh, another groom's in my wedding has a little boy. So, like, my tight knit boys hadn't gone through it. And while I wanted to talk to them about it, I didn't want to burden them with it either. It was just kind of like, uh, just buck up and be strong, be there for Kelly, and, you know, you'll get through it kind of thing. How is she handling it? Kelly is, to say Kelly's strong would not even be accurate. I mean, she's just a rock. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, she's just a rock. But what I got to learn about Kelly, and I don't mean that by any stretch of the imagination that I'm glad what happened, but what was interesting about what happened, my relation with Kelly, is I felt like we have we got to know each other so much more, mm. like through it. She's, she's such, she's like, she's so individualistic, right? She's so independent that I got to see another side of her that was, just made us closer. You know, that like the vulnerability, you know, all of that, and then, you know, my couple of encounters where I lost my, you know what, I mean, I, it just made us closer. Yeah. So I had a dad that was on here once and he said that like what helped him fall in love with his wife was when she was like so sick and hurting. And it was like the first time in their marriage, he felt like she needed him. Yeah. No, that's a very, yeah, that, that's a, that's a very good way to put it. It just, again, it's not a great thing when you stretch the imagination, but it's, this whole pro, like, I didn't think I could love Kelly any more than I did when I married her. It wasn't even like the tip of the iceberg. Like, like literally, it wasn't even close to the way I feel about her now. And, you know, you got to go through some, you know what, sometimes to, you know, get the rose on the other end. I think that's a big part of it. You know, some higher beings in place, whatever it may be, it, it just kind of end up where we're at. So it, it was awful. You know, Chris was talking about it. Is there something wrong with this? Is this going to happen? She's 38. Or, we, or did we run out of time? You know, all those things, you know. We have people, women have children of 50 these days, you know right. what I mean? It, it, you know, but all these things go through your mind and you just can't help it. And then to Chris's point, my m mentality or mental state, mental health, whatever you want to call it. Like I was, I was raging. Like I, I was raging. And I, um, I mean, it's a terrible thing to say, but there's a few times like I was like, I just wish I could get my hands on somebody. Like that's how, like, I'm just raging inside. Uh, Did the, you ever have like, when I feel that way, I like, scream in the car no I, I, I like go alone and I like scream you know but to have an outlet to get that energy out of your body like I understand that what you're saying right so, so my gym is 0.8 miles down okay the hill, there it is and yeah. I go there and put on headphones <laughs> and act like a lunatic and let people judge <laughs> no, and no. then you walk out of there a better man <laughs> and I walk out I'm like yeah. you're not in prison you didn't kill anybody and you're going home to kill me <laughs> setting that off way. all the lunk alarms <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> gym counseling. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, that's what I did. I'm a big outdoorsman, spent a lot of time in the woods. So I uh, spent a lot of time at the farm, you know, uh, hunting with friends. But the more and more I did that, the more and more I miss Kelly and wanted to be around her too, you know, yeah. because we're both hyper individual, hyper independent. But this whole thing, like, it's not that we didn't enjoy being around each other before. We love each other to death. But now it's like, dude, I want to hang out with my life. Yeah. You know, again, not that it wasn't like that before. It's just a more heightened awareness, I guess, if you will. This one on. So, again, Kelly being Kelly, we're planning again. We know when ovulation is coming. We're let me ask you a quick sure. question, though. Did she miscarry naturally or did she have to have a DNC performed? It, so that's that's a good question. I was actually going to. Uh, I didn't ask Chris that either. Yeah, but I was going to tack on to uh, what Chris said. So we elected to have the DNC. OK. Very interesting conversation. I'm a very direct communicator, probably a little too candid. I've been told, I asked the doctor, I basically, I was like, the hell? Like, are you serious? 
And he told me his number was actually 30%. He said, Justin, 30% of pregnancies end in miscarriage. And it floored me. I thought I was the only one on earth that ever had a miscarriage. You know, I just didn't know about it. I mean, he, yeah. Chris is exactly right. We don't talk about it as society. We don't educate. And he's 100% right that you can't say, oh, well, so-and-so had 25 miscarriages and now they have 18 kids. I mean, that's just like, you, know, you couldn't keep that to yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. But for some reason when he, because he was, all right, fine. And he, I mean, it was, he was very direct. He used some profanity back at me. And we had this really direct conversation. And I, it, the three days, I think it was three days since it happened. For the first time in three days, I didn't feel alone. And it was with a complete stranger. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just hearing that, hearing that you have no idea how common this is, this is probably a good thing. His words, this is probably a good thing. She's been on birth control for 20 years mm -hmm. and she got pregnant within two months of going off birth control. This is probably a good thing, Justin. This was the doctor. Yeah, this was the doctor saying that. He, and, he, and he was, what he, the point he was making was, this is her body getting ready. Right. And I was just like, wow, dude, that's so, that, I mean, that's huge. And I walked out, not smiling, but not wanting to kill people in food line anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like bricks just floated it, it, away. It, it, was, it, it was unbelievable. And Praise to that doctor was, right yeah, and, and for I, doing I, his job. He, he, was, he was amazing. I'll never forget him. I'm like, I mean, if you walk in this room right now, I'd know who he was and hug him. You know, and then by this time, Ke Kelly's, you know, in post-op and like being with her in the bathroom and help cleaning her up and, and going through that with her and carrying her down to the car, getting her inside. I mean, again, not that it's a good thing, but this whole process I don't, is it bad for me to even say that I'm kind of secretly thankful for? I don't know if that's the no. right way to say it. It's just, I don't think so. No, I mean, the way I, that other people <clears throat> will describe it too is like, for those of us that have had miscarriages and been through it, is that like little, little Grayson would be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, it's really, I talk a lot about God and my faith on this right. podcast, but like, I absolutely believe that I believe in God and you know, I believe that all of these things happen for a reason, for a reason. And, you know, some people on this podcast will hear this and that's going to be very painful for them. Right. Because maybe they're listening to this podcast for hope, but they're not pregnant yet. And they've had multiple miscarriages and they're trying and they're trying and they're they're really angry with me right now for saying that everything happens for a reason. And this is just kind of, you know, a little bit flippant. But I like to hear that a little bit of that underlying story of healing and courage and connection and all of the beautiful things in different ways. Like I, I have, you know, different clients that conceived in all different ways after loss and grief. And ultimately you end up with a baby or you don't, you end up adopting or you don't end up with a baby and your life takes a different turn. But I really like I feel what you're saying in that, um, you know, I I kind of connect and feel the same way that you feel about that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. It, it On the same token, though, I do feel a little bad about it, too, because if you make the statement, you're you're, you're not happy, but it, it made you closer. So you're somewhat appreciative of such an awful situation. I still feel that it's kind of bad to say because of Kelly. Because, you know, from her standpoint, like, how dare you say something like that? We could have just become, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I still am. There are other ways. Is yeah. Is what you're saying. Yeah. Right. I'm so, right. I'm so yeah. careful but, how I right. articulate right. that. Yeah. But that's, it's an underlying thing that I think, you know, was yeah. a good thing for us. And I think it goes back to what we were saying earlier, like, in many ways, grief, losing a child, when you're a mom, a dad, no matter what, losing a child, no matter what gestation, mm -hmm. it's a, it's probably a grief that you're going to feel your entire life, right. you know? And, and you, you said, you know, it sounds like the, Kelly, Kelly's pretty deep, uh, you know, in her faith, you know, you guys are as well. It, it's, it's, I travel a lot for work. I've got a team of eight scattered around the all, all 11 states in the Southeast. So I'm on the road a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm actually getting ready to be an ambassador member for, with Marriott. That's how awful my life is. But, you know, that's a whole other story. <laughs> I, I, I worked for Marriott awesome. for 16 years. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I hit ambassador next week. Nice. I'm two nights away. There you go. And then I had to land nice. like, oh, congratulations. Yep. like, no, do you realize how terrible my life is if I hit this? Like, <laughs> this is not a cool thing to do. You is know? it good that I love my life that I don't know what an <laughs> ambassador <laughs> is? You get free cookies yeah. on Wednesday. So um, I was there when it happened. Like, I was home. And it was on a random, I think, Tuesday. When I usually, I leave Tuesday and I'm going to come back Thursday. So not to fast forward, but when the miscarriage happened, I was home. 
when we got pregnant, I was home. I mean, obviously I was home. When we found out I was home, all these milestones throughout, like I was home. And I've always looked back kind of retrospective and like, wow, that's got to be part of this yeah plan, right? yeah 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 exactly yeah exactly so <laughs> i would say that was absolutely designed by god so i i think that's really really cool um so i'm sorry i'm babbling to to answer your question we um so we tried naturally for a while obviously with the dnc it takes a bit you know so we're into the you know the the, the better part of uh eight months at this point because we lost two months, you know, everything got straight, a couple months. We didn't get pregnant for two or three months. So we went to a uh, get to a fertility clinic here in town. Okay. And we did a our first IUI. Okay. And again, being around, we found out she wasn't pregnant. We were at the farm for a weekend when I was there. Yeah. So we're still trying the whole time. Kelly's still tracking. You know, I mean, I, I was your story. I was just right there with you. The, the peaks and troughs of emotions throughout this process, you li- I mean, as cliche as it is, you can't explain it. Like if somebody has not been through this, they have no idea the emotional roller coaster. Um, and the, the, the IU, so we did IUI as yeah, well, yeah, right? Yeah. Let's and define they, it because there might be some people listening that have no idea what IUI is and how that's different from yeah. IVF. So who wants to take the floor on? Well, it's intrauterine um, inception, yeah. I think is what it stands Insemination. For, right? Insemination. Yes. Yeah. Insemination. <laughs> what great movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that great for fertility, right? Um, so, uh, you, I mean, you... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the, the guy uh, the shows watch some, some bad 80s movies <laughs> it, the, in a bathroom. It, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> like when I turned those oh, things on, I was like, my phone's better. Yeah, it's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. I was always curious uh, about those like, rooms. Dude, I, mean, I, I just like, uh, they, like, I mean, it, like, it, like, it's like, wait a minute, this one's in black and white. Are you kidding? Like oh, they did this and, back then? You right. know? <laughs> and then some have like categories. You're like, oh, international. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> international. Yeah, it's a real treat. <laughs> So in the Do you middle, have a time limit? No, no. <laughs> That's what, wow. Yeah. So is, what, it, what is he, it the school of thought to be like, okay, I'm gonna take my time and be cool, or you just want to get out of there? I mean, <laughs> so, dude, I a try whole to, bunch of stuff. Yeah. Going on. You try. I mean, you try to literally close your eyes just, as much as possible, just, be just quiet everything, and just get the job done. Yep. And then you get to luckily walk back out in the waiting room, like, hey, what's up? Thirty yeah. people. Yeah. We don't know what I just did. Yeah, exactly. You have the, the, the and they're paper. all there to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little brown paper bag you put on the desk. You know, that's me with the sticker. Wow, wow. Real you know, treat. you walk out, there's grandmas and moms mm-hmm. in there, you know, with their daughter having the first baby. Like, what's he doing? Don't worry about a grandma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It so is, is it immediate? Though. Like, so you deliver your sample and then Kelly's like waiting somewhere you, for it? No, it's they, 24 hours, right? It's so... They have to wash it. Yeah, they wash yeah. it. So it can be same day, but sometimes it's like the next day. I think ours... I think ours... I think ours were all the same day. I think we did the same day too. I think. Yeah, so they wash and then they do the procedure that afternoon yeah. or whatever it is. So you like leave, have lunch, come back? Yeah. Or like, how does that work? Okay. Leave, come... I mean, it's... Do you get to be with your wife when she's then getting in, oh, we, yeah, we, we inseminated? Took pictures. Yeah, oh, we okay. took pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, did, like we, did, a, we did selfies selfie. every time because yeah. <laughs> I want to show Grace and I, I don't know if this is what happened, uh, but yeah. this may be how you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. But here's another introspective. So we had sex the day before and the day before that. OK. And she was ovulating. The timing was perfect. And the, the physician said you probably did this naturally, but we're going to go ahead and do it. So I've held on to that because of my ego. There you go. Yeah. You know what there I mean? He said, we did this like naturally. It. He didn't do this. That makes we, perfect yeah. sense. We did so this. you had three days yeah. of like, let's call it deposits. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And in yeah. one of those, you got pregnant with Grayson. So we, she teases me. She goes, oh, no, Dr. Did it? I'm like, no, no, no. I <laughs> yeah. did it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with bad movies and all. Yeah, so. No, 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 no. Well, Na- naturally, because I like going back. My ego says we did it naturally. We didn't need his help. Right. You know, right. you know yeah. I mean? yeah. But she she likes to bust my you know what on that. So I bet you did though because you had already been pregnant naturally too. So tell her that next time you talk to her. Please. I will. Thank you, I will. Heidi. Yes. You, but Heidi. knowing, but I do like that hearing about Kelly and how much of a planner she is, and anyone who's listening. Why not double dip, right? Like, hey, do everything, right? Still keep having sex because it's connecting you with your partner and there's still a chance you're going to conceive naturally. But hey, if this other thing is an opportunity, like... You, why not? So, and Chris, you said you guys had did you did IUI also, but that was unsuccessful. Yeah, it didn't work. So, 
But was yeah, this before the uterine surgery? Yeah, absolutely. It was before the surgery. Before we went to the second doctor. So okay. your your first one was unsuccessful. The IUI. Yes. Yeah. So it was ours. And well, I don't. Jeez, I think we were going to do a second one, but we decided not to. Okay. Just because the whole th- I was I I was like I don't get it. Like it doesn't seem like. You didn't I mean, like going in the room, just be honest. I mean, I did think it was really <laughs> cool how all you have to do in a public bathroom is put a recliner in there and it just fancies it up into a lounge. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, really, this is yeah, it's like so, a hospital bathroom. Yeah, it's really, the it's room, a right? And they just bathroom. put a lock on the door. You just blew yeah. my yeah. mind yeah. right now oh, because the, I didn't envision a bathroom at all. Oh, no, the, yeah. oh, no, it's like, the little tile floors and everything. Yeah. Like a hospital bathroom. Oh, my God. Bathroom. I'm envisioning like carpet and wallpaper. Like red velvet curtains. Yeah. Employees must wash the ice and air blade. I mean. I'm so thankful. And the paper towel holder. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's. It's. It's interesting. Yeah. I'm glad that, yeah, my experience <laughs> was very similar to other other people's. Yeah, so it didn't work for us. And it, 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 it was interesting, too, because it was more of we've we've been, I don't want to say let down because that, that's probably overstepping a little bit. We, I've personally, and I know that uh, Jess, who sounds like Kelly's spirit animal or vice versa, um, just based on the way you describe her, you sound like you're describing my wife. They need to be friends. Yeah, all yeah. three of um, all three of your wives need to meet and be friends. Things, so we were let down by the the medical community in certain regards as to how people approach this. So it's like a phone call, like, hey, you're not pregnant after you do an IUI link, right? Like, I understand they probably do this 100 times a day. Mm-hmm. And then Jess told me also, I think she got a bill, right? A final bill. Yeah, we got a bill. And for then, like, for your, for the birth of the baby that wasn't happening after a miscarriage yeah, or something. We went, this happened twice at the first doctor we're at. I'm, I'm proud. I, our memories are different sometimes. I should probably correct me after she listens to this. But we, after we had the first loss confirmed, as we're checking, well, when I walked in, they said, hey, dad. Well, we were pretty sure we already lost the baby. Like, And on the way out, they're like, so you'll be back in eight weeks for your next. And we're like, we literally, you just told us that we lost our baby. And we were scheduling a DNC. And they wanted to schedule our next ultrasound. And then, yeah, they called for a follow-up ultrasound. And I think that happened two or three times. Ugh, this just makes me want to... Right, so if there's so, anybody, God, like, willing that works in a doctor's office and an OBGYN office, is like, like listen, yeah. figure out a way for your electronic medical records to right. catch up yeah. to the front desk quickly. And our experience at the second, the second facility, the second clinic that we went to was a 180 completely different experience right so and i think technology is a piece of that but i also think it's we're habitual right human beings so i think if you do the same thing you can lose kind of context into how you should perform what you do is your job but you know, i'm like i said i'm an older guy but it's always do the best no matter what it is right if you're going to flip hamburgers be the best at it yeah it and hurts my feelings really set. quick when you say you're older and we're like the same age <laughs> i'm older than these two guys that's what I'm, um, I'm like let's just clarify right. yeah. like you might I'm be older, older. Than my wife. i'm older than my wife. i'm super young you are you are i'm like right. i'm super young yeah. like i'm it. super so, I'm, like I'm, I'm mature as like a 19 year old right? so yeah like, <laughs> but so that 19 was, that's well yeah. done right yeah. you, bud. i'll be i'll be a man here soon i'm looking forward to that but yeah it's well, disappointing sometimes because you do you go through the and the, uh, our experience with the dnc was it's a traumatic thing but then it's i think it's a, so it's a common thing right and it can be like it's our way as a like a biological entity to when something isn't right that's what the body does right and i think that's by design and it doesn't diminish the pain or the emotional like you mean you mean miscarriage yeah, like that, yeah. that's that type of loss right yeah. because it is i mean it's it's a physiological response to something being wrong right, right. no it's either a dna is something not right there or it's and that gives a little bit of like comfort comfort's probably not the right word it gave me a little bit of like okay like that makes sense. Like, so I'm a, I'm a extremely like logical. It applies ration and logic. Right, yeah. Absolutely. So that's I, can, what... I can hold on to that. Right. Yeah. Cause that's okay. Like that, I get that. And, but I think that the, the female experience is a totally different thing that mm-hmm. I've, there's, I tried my best to be able to empathize and be there and say like, I know you're hurting and I know what it's like. And, but I would never let myself utter those words to Jessica. I could never say, I know what it's like. Cause I don't, I don't yeah. have no, I mean, she was emotionally attached like to these beings right. um, and a, it's a lot of moms will tell you including myself like 
I felt like a mom, like I felt conception from the, like from the, I'm like, absolutely. I was like, Jess, that like I woke up and was like, looked at my husband and was like, I'm oh, pregnant. Mom, yeah. And he was like, you're crazy, yeah. you know, but like <laughs> I, and I felt like a mom in that moment. Now we're going to take a short break to just share a few things with you. Thanks for listening to the birth story podcast. I am so excited to announce the launch of my book, Birth Story, a 42-week guide for your pregnancy, a collection of these birth stories, a ton of doula advice, and journaling prompts. You can order a copy today at birthstory.com. It also will mean the world to me if you'll spread the word about this podcast. So on Stitcher or on iTunes, just leave a review. Thanks. When did you feel like a dad? I'm curious. Oh How, we have two, we have three of you guys sitting at the table. Two of you have experienced loss. Yep. And then Cass, you had a successful first time viable pregnancy. But I was curious, like, for each of you to answer this question, like, at what moment in the pregnancy or the birth did you actually feel like a father? And I've had people answer this that they didn't even feel that way until like months later after the birth too. So I mean, just kind of jump in. Uh, sure, I'll I'll step up. But uh, but I think for me personally, the whole fatherhood feeling did not kick in until Kennedy was actually born. Until I actually saw Kennedy and was holding Kennedy, that's when it actually clicked in. I think the entire eight and a half months, nine months leading up to Kennedy's birth, it was more about just being there for my wife. And being a husband before a dad and trying to to be the best husband that I could during that time. Obviously, huge sympathy to you guys and going through what you went through and not having experienced that. But, yeah, I just thought that my my goal and, and my job was to be a husband and be the best husband that I that I could be. The fatherhood definitely didn't kick in until I saw Kennedy being born. And then in that moment... I'll say I felt the sense of fatherhood. And then when you leave, you know, two to three days later and you and you you put them in your car and you're like, you're just going to let me leave with this child and just walk out the door. And that's that's being. that's the end of yeah. it. Like, OK, <laughs> just high five me and we're out of here and send me a bill later. Like, that's exactly know, that, how it is. Exactly. exactly. It's exactly how it is. And you're just walking away with this car seat and this child and, and your wife's in a wheelchair. And you're like, OK, let, <laughs> let's be both now. Let's be both the husband and the father. And then, you know, I think. Even in the infant age, I will say the connection you're trying to make with a child that is, by all intents and purposes, not even really seeing you, if if you will, is almost tough because then you start to feel like, am I supposed to feel like I'm not connected or am I connected or is this how everyone feels? But again, it's one of those things as a guy you don't talk about, you're like, it'll just work out the way it needs to work out. But here in the last, and Kennedy's three months old, but here in the last probably two weeks, f- the word father and dad means so much more than it did three months ago because she's starting to become aware. She's starting to see me, I feel like. She's starting to smile. The interaction's becoming. And, I, and that in and of itself for me is starting to define fatherhood for sure. And And that's cool. been my journey. So, you know. I know everyone's a little bit different, but I will say in the beginning, like with the infancy and being a few days old and a few weeks old, it's like right now I'm just take I'm just taking care of you. And I don't even really get to feed you, to be honest. I just wake up at 2 a.m. and hand you to my wife and then she feeds you and then I send you back to bed like that's my job and an occasional burp every now and then. Mm-hmm. It's so you're trying to figure out what does that look like? But, man, t- the the amount of time is just exponential when they're infants the the leaps and bounds and for me personally the leaps and bounds from feeling like a husband to a father have been just significant i'd say like in the last two weeks yeah, yeah. did did can i ask a question yeah did, did y'all read books oh my god yeah so i can <laughs> compare notes to yeah, like yeah yeah you did so, yeah. so I, I, I didn't until we got in a big knockdown like knockdown not knockdown trailer, but we got yeah. a big fight about she's like raise a box and i'm like what what and right. I was like, okay, I ordered two books on Amazon. Listen yeah. to your doula's podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it, but it was 200 pages in each book of them saying, basically, don't be an ass. Do the laundry, do the dishes. Right, step up. D- yeah. And, you know, and, and I, I said, honey, like, I'm not reading any more books. I do all this stuff. Like, right. I, it, this is just basically saying, pitch in, don't be an ass about it. So, 
I was just curious what y'all's take on that yeah. was. Yeah, I've read a couple. I've, I've read, I've read the chapters of the birthing store or birthing method or whatever. I can't remember. It's, but I read one that was on baby brain development. Like, oh, that's cool! Nerd, wow, that yeah. one was all. I'm still reading. It's awesome. Like like that's heavy neuro. Extensive. Yeah, it's it's all back in science. So it's a he's I think he's a neurologist. Yes, yeah. I'm sure. So oh, it's wow. all like study based, but mm-hmm. it's like just it's fast. It's mind blowing stuff. That's so I, Justin. Well, just like Kelly is kind of like uh, you know planners. Like Jess is really like data oriented. Oh, yeah. Like I learned more from her than I think she learned from me. Oh really? And that she would send me articles and I'm like, yep, never read that one before. I mean, I don't wow. even know where she found some of this stuff. I mean, so well, educated. Yes. I can imagine she was like, you have to yeah. have all of these things read by tomorrow morning. I can show you my <laughs> you know? phone now because I get those articles on a daily basis, right? Oh, which, and some books. of it's great, which is so... Where, where do y'all live? We live in uh, Country Club Heights. Yeah. Well, we live in um in, in Villa Heights. Okay, yeah, so we're right down. The all right, we're just gonna have yeah. to figure. Yeah, yeah, we're put them together. I'm just curious. So about I had this. I had books provided to me. <laughs> okay, fair. wow. Prior, and then I had a buddy. So so my best friend were the same age. You know, younger wives didn't sh- weren't sure if we'd ever be dads. He had his son a week before mine. Oh, cool. So That's we awesome. both told each other on New Year's Day. He called me. I was like, "You won't believe this. We have news." And I'm like, "Don't even tell me." So he sent no me a book. Way. He sent me The Expectant Father, I think, which is... Mm-hmm. That's what I, I read. That's I mean, I, I haven't read it because I'm not a dad, right, right, right. but... Yeah. Yeah. That's both. It's, it's yeah. yellow, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's one yeah. of the ones I read. Which, yep. it's got some Do you recommend data. it? I, 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 I wouldn't I, recommend reading it from I don't. cover to back. Okay. I think there's some good stuff in there. But I, if you're, I think if you're a capable husband and man, and then you... There's good stuff in there, but there's probably some other resources that might be more beneficial. Yeah, I can see how it would be kind of like degrading if you're, you know, to have a book that's just like telling you how to be a good person. If you already it's are a, a good person and a good husband. A lot of it's common sense type stuff. Yeah, right? it, yeah. It, it's 100 percent. I mean, it's yeah. it's I'm trying to say this tactfully. There's a lot of guys out there that should read the book. I mean, let's just be <laughs> let's be 100 percent. Let's yeah. be 100 percent honest about it. But if you have um, again i'm trying to be t- if you have half a brain and you love your wife and you t- want to take care of things i, I think it's a waste of time because yeah. that's basically what yeah. it tells you i think that kind of goes back to what i was saying is during those nine months with christine i was focused on being a husband yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and yeah. i think it comes with the territory of what being a husband looks like around the house right you know and not well, to diminish so, that but th- so he has a second book that's like the first year father Okay, and that's awesome. Okay, that's, I like well, that's that one. Like, guy, I have that, and I have another one that's written like a car manual. It's called like the baby manual with diagrams and literally written like the manual for my car. Awesome. I can. So if something's yeah, happening. I'm like, that look, first I'm gonna be like, okay, this is normal. Like the grunting is normal. That should okay. be an yeah, app, cool, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that yeah. should be like an app. Um, All right. Well, this brings me to see. I'm kind of biased on this because a hundred percent. I mean, maybe like give or take a few, but like a hundred percent of the dads that I work with as a doula, are kind of in your same camp, right? Like, they're really supportive of their wives to the point that they pay out of pocket a lot of money for a doula, right? So I feel like these kind of things go hand in hand, right? Like, so I'm not really dealing as a doula. I'm not dealing with dads that are just, like, clueless and treat their wives terrible and are unprepared. Like, But that correlates. Yeah. That that correlates. Like, a couple's not going to hire a doula that's not going to take care of the house. and the Right. right, All the things. Yeah. So I want to know, like, what was your doula journey? Like, had you ever heard the word doula before? Did you know how much a doula costs? Like, how... Like, I mean, I, you're not going to offend me at all. So I want to know, like, how, like, how did you get a, how did you get me as your doula? Like, how did that come, a, how come about? Let me pop this open. Okay. So, That's a beer. Y- yeah. And I should let all the listeners know, not only is everyone <laughs> drinking beer, there, we are eating the inducer pizza. Mm, so really it's awful. kind of like a famous pizza from it Hawthorne. It is delicious. And it's um, known to send so many women into labor that I just had to get to, I had to try it. <laughs> so, and maybe we'll see if any of you guys did Lesson. anybody like on this little beer break. Did anyone have the inducer's wife had the inducer pizza? We did. We did. Okay, we Cass, did. you guys yeah. did. Did it send you into labor? Uh, within uh, two weeks, yeah, I think we ended okay, up. Okay, yeah, well, that would be a two weeks. negative. <laughs> 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 uh, Should have tried it again. Yeah. So, And you guys didn't I think either? We either talked about it so much that I think we did. 
But then I don't think we did. Oh, okay. But well, I mean, we tried. <laughs> but we Jess tried, had gestational yeah, diabetes. Like, yeah, why we didn't do it. So yeah. we planned on it. There and you then go. she was like, right. Ding, ding, line, ding. So gestational diabetes yes. would put you yeah. out of this. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no All right, back to the doula stuff. Yeah. How did you find me? How did you get convinced, I guess? I, I think our story is interesting, too. So when we we got to the point, so I don't know if it was like 12 weeks or what it was. That was like, so let's we need to be positive and think that this is going to happen. So we want to be ready, like as ready as we can be. And Jess mentioned to me, she's like, hey, I'm going to start looking at, she'd done all this research and she's going to start doing a doula. And I honestly, I thought it was like an exercise class. I had, I had absolutely no idea. I thought it was yoga. You're right. Like, what oh, was that yoga? Sounds, was that hot yoga? Like, what are we, goat yoga? Like, yoga, goat. What is, what is, if you send me a picture on a yoga mat with a goat on your back, I'm going to be furious. So... She explained it to me and I was like, so it's like a, cause I, I was born by a midwife right in Texas back in the seventies. And I was like, so is it a midwife? And she's like, no, it's different. There's like a, and I was not, we, we communicate ex- very differently, like extremely differently. So Jess, will, I'll ask her a question, you know, would you like, I'm, I'm getting up. Would you like me to get anything? And she'd be like, oh, milk would be delicious. I'd be like, okay, I'm getting up. Would you like me to get you anything? I mean, just say yes. I want to drink. So, and that I, I have to work on that, right? Because I'm very literal. Like I, I heard, need, I heard, yeah, I'm sure I, I heard, get a glass of milk. I heard, get a glass of milk. <laughs> yeah, right. This is not dangerous. Me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Not me at all. So, <laughs> milk so is delicious. as she's like explaining to me what this, I speak Jessica, right? What this, which is good, <laughs> helped us out a lot. Um, what this is, I'm still struggling. Like I can't, I'm not grasping the need or what it is. And then she said the word advocate. She's like, it's an advocate for us. It's an advocate for what we want to happen. And it's a support mechanism type thing. And she knows me well enough to use those type of words. That makes sense to me. And I was like, absolutely. Does, I don't care what it costs. If it's going to make you feel more comfortable and put us in a better place, do what you have to do. And then she went through an interview process. And we have a mutual friend from, because we used to go to the church that you go to. So, and Emily was part of our wedding and her husband baptized me and married us. Oh, cool. I didn't even know that. Okay. Austin's one of my best friends, as is Emily. So she was like, Emily, you know, set me up for, introduced me to Heidi and she's awesome. And I don't want to, she might not have actually interviewed anyone else. I think she had some scheduled and she met with you. And so it was a done deal. Okay. So it was a very easy decision for me personally to say, do whatever you have to so do. So advocate and support. Yep. All and right. those are your big. Yeah. Being an advocate, I think, is a huge thing, right? I mean, okay. they're, especially with the way the insurance companies are and with how, you know, litigation and lawyers being involved in everything nowadays. I think oh. anytime you can have someone else willing to be on your team, it's it's crazy. I know. This. And we're going to get to your birth stories in a minute. So I think we'll do that next, maybe. Yeah. But I yeah. felt like there was a lot of advocacy that was, yeah. <laughs> ultimately, there was a lot of those two words kind of came to life in you and Jessica's birth, you know, 100%. with Ethan. So I'm yeah. going to go back to both you guys. So had you heard of a doula? I, I personally had never heard of a doula until Christina mentioned it to me, okay. um, in which case I did some Googling and some homework and some research. Uh, Christina is also one of those people like your wives. I haven't got to share too much about Christina but she is very set out, planned. This is how it's going to be. And in a lot of ways, I go back to stubborn. Oh, my God. (laughs) Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I knew right away. In a fantastic way. But yeah, I'm not going to give away too much, but I knew right away she was going to have a natural childbirth because I was like, she's never going to. She's there's not. I couldn't imagine a world (laughs) where she was going to actually not. Well, the time that you know. I knew it was definite is she's sitting there bouncing on a medicine ball in our living room. And you're like, Christina, do you want to have a natural birth? And she's like, um, and you're like, if you say, um, you're not going to make it. And she's like, then I want to have a natural birth. And that was, you, you know, that, exactly. And so from, from that point forward, that was kind of, Christina approached me about it when we first got pregnant that she wanted to have a doula. Again, didn't know anything about it, did a little bit of homework, talked to her a little bit about it, and then just kind of backburned it. It was like, well, you know, we'll see what happens. But Christina's one of those people that puts her mind to something and it's done. So within, man, I, I mean, I am a very faith-based person. Within three weeks of her saying that, we're at church, uh, at, at Watershed at church, and 
sorry. That, That's oh, fine. Okay. You can say where we okay. go to yeah, church. So, so I didn't know where name Praise Jesus. And all that. Yeah, kidding. absolutely. No, Watershed's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. If you're looking for somewhere, that's a spot. Yeah, exactly. But no, um, so Christina's about to do a, a little thing on stage at Watershed, and she's sitting there, and it literally just so happened she's sitting beside you that day. I know. That was um, weird, right? And somehow— she mentioned I didn't the know word she doula. Was pregnant. Exactly. Right. This yeah. was very early on. Yeah, I mean, she did look very pregnant early and everything. On. And she mentions the word doula and you're sitting right there and she comes off the stage, comes sits with me, and she's like, I found our doula. And I'm like, <laughs> Where? <laughs> Is that like, yoga? That's yoga we talked about a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. Like what, what just happened? What just transpired in the last 30 minutes that I'm clueless about because I saw you on stage? God at, spoke at, to her. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Whispered right in her ear from the second row. So uh, from that point, we uh, we set up a coffee date with Heidi. We sat down, talked. Obviously, we don't have a massive money tree in the backyard. So uh, the finances were definitely a, a piece of the puzzle for us. If you multiply um, what you paid me by two times per month for a whole year, <laughs> I also don't have a big money tree. So, you know, <laughs> fact, fact. But, you know, every every dime counts, I should say. And especially right. when you're talking about bringing a child into the world and, you know, I think the average report says, you know, it costs this much money to have a child until they're 18. So everything scares you from a financial standpoint. So adding an extra bill that we did not see coming into play was definitely a concern for sure for me. But in and of itself, I had told Christina, if this is what you want, then this is what we'll do. I just want to feel comfortable in knowing what my role will be, what Heidi's role will be, and, and what this will look like. And at the the coffee sit down that we had, it was laid out perfectly. Everything was explained well. And it really came to light that, that having a natural birth was something that Christina wanted and was something that she, I'll say, needed you to accomplish. And at the end of the day, she was able to accomplish that due to you being in that room. Because it's it's not an easy process. And I think you tell everyone that up front. This is, this is not going to be fun. This is not going to be something that, that you're going to love. It's not going to be something you enjoy. It's going to be a very hard and difficult process and potentially the most difficult thing you'll ever do in your life. Or as a, we're going to get to your birth stories, but as a husband, it's also very difficult to see. Absolutely. I, and I don't think that resonates until you actually see it. It's one of those things where in the moment, being told it's going to be difficult to watch versus watching it. Two completely different things and, and being a husband and being a man and wanting to protect your wife and seeing her helpless and knowing you can do it's nothing. The worst feeling um, in the world. And you touch her wrong and that's the wrong spot. It, I mean, it, it's just uh, it's quite a difficult process. But yeah. And just to get back to what to what we're talking about, having you was what made Christina achieve what she wanted to achieve out of the birth and, and brought Kennedy into the world. And, and I wouldn't trade it for a minute. Because it's what Christina wanted, and you know, I'll support that. Yeah, so. and I can't wait for us to share our stories in yeah, a minute. Yeah, I didn't want to highlight on that too much. It was so beautiful. All right, and then Justin, we can laugh now because I mean, I don't want to skip too far ahead, no, but I'm um, going to be honest. You know, but <laughs> there was no there was no doula <laughs> at your birth. But tell me when Kelly, like you know, approached you and said, "Hey," I, and she was planning to have a natural childbirth. She's a marathon runner. And um, this was something she was pretty interested in. So tell yeah. me what your first reaction was. So um, advocate would not be the correct word for, okay. for me. I, I was 100% against it from the start. Like I said, we're both very independent people. And I felt like somebody was being hired to take my place. And I was not having it. Yeah, That's um, fair. Like I wanted to be there for her. I wanted to be the rock. I wanted to be, you know to help through the problems, talk things through. And I, just, I wouldn't have that. I told you that on the couch when we first met. Yeah. I was like, I did, I really. And now I feel this. like you had this intuitive, like there was something there, right? Like there's this intuitive sixth sense almost that kind of knew all along. I think that you knew all along it was going to be you and you wanted it to be you. So when I met you, I told you, you remind me so much of my mother. It's scary. I mean, she looks You're very young. Mother. Yes. yes. I mean, they look they look like they look like identical twins. I love it. Like the hair, the dark eyes, the skin, the laugh, the smile. I mean, they look identical. Yeah. That being said, I still didn't want her. <laughs> Fair enough. When I met with Justin and Kelly, too, for the first time, like every couple is so different in what their needs are. And I remember telling you, like, OK, I'm a coach. 
And if you're, and I knew that Justin, I was getting that feeling like he just wanted to do all of it. And I was thinking in the birth plan, Heidi, your role is to just show Justin how to be a hero. Like, that's what I was thinking my role is. It's like, if Justin gets stuck, if he gets stuck anywhere, it's just going to be like, show him what to do, you know? And and, and that's fair. And and anybody that is considering a duel, I I would really take what I'm about to say to heart because somebody gave me some phenomenal advice. So I was doing research and I was checking into things and I started reading about how the American family is no more, you know, divorces. Her mom lives in Pittsburgh. Dad lives in Florida. My father's passed away. My mom's at the beach that the American family is kind of broken down in a traditional sense where grandparents, like the generations are not together anymore. One's in Colorado, Washington, D.C., you know, whatever. So it's not there. So if you think about a doula taking the place of the women in the in the traditional family in that way. So, you know, in traditional childbirth for the last century or so, aunts, grandparents, mothers, older sisters, like people that had childbirthing experience are always around to kind of carry the woman through childbirth. And I, I got that advice and it, like, it clicked for me immediately. And and I, I I was against like me and Kelly got a big fight about it. Like I was completely against it. We're not paying this money, not taking my job. Like, no, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. And I got that advice. And it, I would really invite anybody to sit down and really think about that if they're against the dual process, because the level of support, like Kelly always asked me my opinion, always. Nine times out of ten, she goes and get a, gets a second opinion too to just make sure mine's right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just that's who Kelly is. And her having Heidi to text, to call, to go through, like you could see it. It was just a lift off of her, you know. And and then it got like the more we went down, I got. What are you asking me? Text Heidi for. You're going to text her anyway. Text Heidi. Right. You, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. So I want you to fold right into your birth story. Okay. Though, because I just feel like we can't jump around from this. Yeah. Because, okay. So, yeah. So we're, you hire me. I'm texting. Uh, we're, we're doing uh, some prenatals. Like we're. Orlando? Yeah. And about five. W- when was your due date? Guest date. So. Let's the, start with that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, it was father's, you no, know, June 17th. Yeah. And then May 27th. So were, were you in Orlando? Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, hey, Kelly. Yeah. So she comes over and says, hey, by the way, I'm going to be on vacation for a couple of weeks. It's no big deal. Y'all aren't due. Yeah, cool. Whatever. I was like, I've got a backup doula. You don't have any signs and symptoms. I was like, you know, I feel pretty comfortable taking my kids to Disney World for a couple of days. This is going to be great. And literally the second I drive away, I don't know if you know this part of the story. I called Kelly and I said, Kelly, I said, I don't, I'm just getting like a weird feeling. She told me. Yeah. 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 I said, I'm getting a weird feeling, but I really like you need to, this is Sarah's number, the backup doula. I'm like, just... Just in case, you know, and um, mm. so <laughs> you, you, I think I can't believe biggest you. regret ever. Not really. I, I mean, can't believe I'm blanking on this. I think I think it was June 17th was our original date. Does that sound right? Well, I have it in my phone. June 15th or June 17th. Anyway, yeah, I think it was June 17th. I think it was June 17th. But um, my mom lives at, at the beach, Curry Beach. So every Memorial Day, we go out on the beach and hang out with my brother and his girlfriend and basically party all weekend. So obviously we're not doing that. You know, she's a month out, three and a half weeks, three weeks out. So we didn't go down. I think I played golf Saturday, got up, played golf Monday with one of my best friends. And it was a like an 8 a.m. tea time. Thank God. We're at a 3 p.m. tea time. <laughs> so you're at the beach. No, no, no. I'm, I'm here. Oh, in you're Charlotte. in Charlotte. Yeah, we, okay. We didn't you're go. playing yeah, golf. Okay. Sorry. So. I'll never forget it. We're on hole 13 and I look at my phone and I never check my phone usually when I'm playing. Mm-hmm. And I had five text messages from Kelly oh. and dude, something told me like, just, I knew it. I was like, I it, look at the phone. It's like something told me, dude, look at your phone. And thank, and I, thank God I'd only missed a text for like two minutes at 1042. She texted me a picture of her water broken in the bathroom. Wow. Whoa. So me and my best friend were playing with these these two random guys. They both have kids and I'm Did you get hold on, I got a second photo. What happened right before the water break? Get, Did I'm, you get I, that? Okay. I'm getting to that. <laughs> so the picture of the water breaks. And then another photo comes in, it's the mucus plug. And the two guys we're playing with two random guys. I think they both had two or three kids. And I'm like, you know, we're not, not gonna have the kid for 24 hours. Can I finish this golf round? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. Brutal. Do you want to know what I told Kelly? Uh, 
Well, I, this, is, this is where I probably sound like the worst will ever. I'm talking to her and she's very calm. Like she's not really having contractions. Well, she right? didn't really tell us about her mom until kind of after the fact too, which mm. is a whole nother yeah, thing. Yeah, but I'm but I'm, I was talking to her on the phone. I'm in Florida and she's like, Justin's golfing, and she's like, Do do I need to stop his golf round? And this is me. I said, No. I mean, I'm like, your water broke, contractions will probably start wow. in six to eight hours. You know, I'm like, you're probably having a baby today or tomorrow, but like I said, like, let him finish his golf round. <laughs> well, we thought it was going to be 24 hours. You, you know, know? Like, tomorrow like morning. a 52 on 13th hole. Think- dude, I, that's not <laughs> like, no <laughs> lie. <laughs> from all these men talking. You have to like, be shooting the best. <laughs> <laughs> Come right. on, is there a better Like, no lie, I am two over through 14. I, 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 I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing a great. Exactly. Exactly. I think I was like one or two under through the, through the, had to through the four on the wow. back. Of course. And I don't, you know, going back to what we were talking earlier, like, things kind of happening. I don't know what it was. Like, it's just something said, Get your ass in the car. And I told Ben, I was like, get your ass in the golf cart. We're leaving. So <laughs> here's an interesting thing. So whole 14, we're playing out at, um, am I allowed to say the golf course? Yeah. Yeah, we're playing out at Redbridge, like 35 minutes away from Charlotte. So it's a good little hike. And when me and Ben play, if Ben's driving, I always drive his car because he drives like a 95-year-old grandma. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So he's not an aggressive what driver. Up, yeah. <laughs> and we'll be on the podcast next week. Exactly. Even though he has made he will tell us about you. I mean, he'll, he'll tell us about himself. So get in the golf cart, and hole 14 is the furthest away from the clubhouse. So we just start tearing backwards through the golf course. And we hopped one tee box with people on it. People like you could see are furious. Oh, Marshall come out. Oh, and you. man. So we hit, hit the 15 tee box, and Ben like literally is hanging out over the cart going, his wife's water just broke. And there's like this anger and fury and all these guys just go to like it. like oh congratulations yeah, exactly. man. Yeah. Yeah. totally turns so it. this goes on for three or four holes until we yeah. finally get there we get in the car and we're i maybe 20 red lights i ran on the way home maybe 25 i mean we got home from red bridge in about 15 minutes nice. i mean we <laughs> were rolling yeah. so i get there i'm like what are we doing like we still got a day to chill like you you want to go pack a bag like what, what do you want to do cal she goes, we should probably go to the hospital. I'm like, well, we've talked about this. We don't want to sit there for 20 hours. You know, let's go get something to eat. She goes, let's just go to the hospital and make sure everything's cool. I was all right. Yeah, no problem. So we get in the car, go to the hospital, check everything's straight. I'm like, yeah, you're at one centimeter. I'm like, cool. We're leaving. See you later. We went back home. Yeah. So we're hanging out. At- what time was this? So here's the thing. So 1042 is when I got the text. Right. Never forget it as long as, long as I live. We got to the hospital at 1 because when I got home, we packed bags, took a shower. Like we already had bags packed, but got a few other things together and just made sure we were ready. And she was having some contractions. Very, very, yeah. Can I, it's small, okay? Yeah. yeah. yeah small yeah. contractions. So we got to the hospital. They checked everything. Kelly's straight. Baby's straight. No big deal. We're like, we're leaving. Doc's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, yeah, we're, we're, we're leaving, dude. I'll sign a release, whatever you need. So we signed the release and we left. We got back to the house at 1.30. <laughs> I swear, as soon as we walked through the door, the contractions hit like a hammer. Like, bam! I'm like, oh, man, what are we going to do? I would just like to say they likely wouldn't have done that if you stayed at the hospital. <laughs> Probably. All those Probably fluorescent true. lights would have just like... Rrr. So my arms hurt for weeks. So we laid in our bed, and she just gripped my arms like this. And this went on for three hours. It's so about 4.30. Yeah, about 4.15, 4.30. I was like, call, give Heidi a call. Like, you know, <laughs> Heidi, what, 20 seconds you heard her? Maybe 30? Yeah. So usually I'll stay on the phone and just, like, listen to how someone sounds. You know, my experience is how you sound Right. Like when we mm-hmm. get to Cass's story, mm-hmm. we'll talk about the sounds and mm-hmm. like when I know it's go. So I'm talking to Kelly on the phone for like 30 seconds and I am hearing her <laughs> in transition. Yeah. Like, I mean, deeply in yeah. transition. Oh, wow. And this light bulb goes off as I'm talking to her. And she had mentioned to me while I was at your house that her mom had a very quick labor quick and early and her mom had both her and her sister three weeks early oh wow so she had grace in three weeks early so i'm talking to her i can hear her in transition yep i know her water's already broken once your water's broken transition baby can that urge to push can come at any time right and this light bulb is going off like quick labor early and she just and i could hear it in her voice 
And I'm like, Kelly, you're going to need to go to the hospital. <laughs> like, yeah. I know I'm in Orlando, Florida. I mean, I'm going to call your backup doula like right now. But I'm like, but also Kelly's a marathon runner. And so her pain tolerance is right. very high. And she did not recognize transition as transition. She was just like toughing through it. Like, I think in denial, like there's no way I could be having a baby this quickly. Well, right. Well, I kind of laughed too when you said, you know, it was Jennifer. Is that your wife's name? Christina. Christina. Gosh, I was way off. When you said Christina was stubborn, I kind of snickered. I'm like, well, she know Kelly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all going to be I'll like besties. Yeah, too, yeah, I'm like, they're all going to be like, best friends. Hyper-independent, stubborn. Yeah, this is just Kelly. So Heidi says to her own speaker, I can tell by the sound of your voice, you need to get to the hospital right now. I so, think I was able to coach her yeah, through like one or were, two contractions, you, you, you know, was, but I'm like, you need to go now, you well, know? Yeah. Cause you, you helped her with w in the room. And then I'll never forget it. We got to, you know, the, like the longer couch in our den, the one that I was sitting on when me and you first met, Yeah, she was like leaning over that uh, during a second or even a third, I think. And you coached her through all of that. And then you were like, dude, go yeah. like, like right yeah. now. Go. You, you, like, and so we got to the hospital at, 4.50. I got her upstairs by 5 o'clock. And... I'm going to interject right now. I'm texting Justin yeah. and the backup I doula. I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The backup doula is on her way. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Justin goes radio silent. <laughs> Nothing. Here we go. And I was like, Baby dang time. it. That's <laughs> it. I forgot so, about that. So I don't know what's going on. I'm so curious to hear now your side of the story, because on my side of the story, you're radio silent. Yeah. Okay. Communication has ended with Justin. So let me back up. We're pulling out of the driveway, and this guy that lives across, nicest guy in the world. He's he's like, oh, he could see us coming out, and he could figure out he's got three kids. He could figure out what's going on. And he's like running, like trying to get the run away. And I'm like, shut the up. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. Baby in the car now. And, this, you know? and his face is like, okay. <laughs> Scared him a little. So we, we yeah, yeah, I parked the, I parked the car you, right there. You know, we put your blinkers on, you go up and everything. And I got upstairs at five o'clock and, and she could barely walk down the hallway. And the nurses, I don't think, really realized how far along we were and just how close we were. And I... Because you were just there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know? I literally reached across and said, get your ass up right now. And like drug one down the hall. And then once they realized that this was go time, I mean, it was like a flurry of people. I don't even think all the people were in the room yet. So... One of them tells me to get something in the bathroom, and I come out with a bucket and a pan. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, a, a, a plunger and a toilet Wait, brush. Literally. Is this what you need? Yeah, this guy. No. Like, like, just get so-and-so. And I'm yeah. like, uh, all right. I went in the bathroom, grabbed out, and walked out, and she just shakes her head and takes yeah. one thing and like, <laughs> <laughs> leaves you just hands full. Yeah. Everything. Right. Yeah. Did you feel like... From your perspective, was Kelly like in lots of pain or did you feel like she was controlled and like, did you understand kind of Both. how much pain she was in? Both. Yeah. Okay. Both. I could, you know, I've seen her run marathons. I could tell she was in a lot of pain, okay. but I, I know how tough Kelly is too. Yeah. So. So you knew she was okay. Yeah. I knew she was fine. Okay. Uh, I knew she was fine. Was she throwing up? No. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. So upstairs at five o'clock, get in the room at 5.05, 5.10. She had a con two contractions in the bathroom. And like one of the nurses goes, you can't have the baby in the bathroom. It can't be born in the toilet. Get in here. <laughs> she, gets, she gets on the bed and it was four big contractions and four big pushes. We didn't see any of the first. Second one, crown rescinded. Third one, crown. Fourth one, he was born. That wow. Insane. Like, that's it, unbelievable. It, I mean, it was. That's a first. It was literally like, and I caught it. Like me and the doctor like. That's crazy. What? So we, we weren't even in the hospital literally 45 minutes and this kid was born. I'm not sure. Much Hold story. on. And then I think, <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, wait, wait. No, but then I think the doula so. shows up like right. She shows up like right afterwards or something, yeah, 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 you know, like misses the whole thing. Just yeah. in time to see the first swaddle. Right, exactly. I'm, walking, I'm walking down the hall. I'm like, she's already had it. It's in there. Like your services. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Classic Services coach no move. longer needed, <laughs> you know? Oh, my goodness. But she was great, though, because she helped Kelly a lot with, you know, talking about 
what to do next and what she's going to feel like and what's happening. So I think Kelly, not I think, Kelly really appreciated her being there because once again, it's, you know, it's her husband telling her it's okay instead of, you know, you know, somebody else. Yeah. So it, 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 it was to, to answer your earlier question too, the whole about like it, it dawned on me when it happened. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's who I am as a person. Like I don't get excited about things, really nervous about things until like it actually happens to me. So uh, that was when it was. You had that dad moment at birth. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's in, you know, I'm, I'm really pr- like, I'm a protective person. I was really protective. Kelly did all natural. They started to put the IV in and I literally yelled at a nurse. I was like, don't you dare put anything, you know, like, cause she'd made it that far. And I was like, I'll be damned if somebody's going to screw this up for her. So, so she uh, wanted natural. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was good job advocating for. Her. Yeah. That, go, that was, Justin, go. That was going to happen. <laughs> you know, she, she made that decision. I don't think you need to do a lot on your next birth. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she can just text me for free. <laughs> for the support. Very, very nice of you. Very nice of you. <laughs> I think I owe you one. <laughs> 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 Buy one, get one free. Uh, yeah. uh, but no, I mean, for your audience, like what I said earlier, I, I would really invite people to think about it that way. I, I think it, it he made it. Chris made a great point. Any extra support or effort, like you'd be crazy not to utilize, right? Absolutely. I really don't. It, when you put it in that way, and then you put it in the way that the generations aren't around to help out too. It just, you know, I think we're a lot of like being logic based. The logic is square on. For sure. Yeah. And I think afterwards too, like I'm not a postpartum doula, but I always tell everybody I'm a mom, Mm -hmm. you know, so I try to talk to Kelly and like all of your wives as much as possible, like after the birth too, just to find out like, how's everything going and do you need help? And, you know, how's nursing and, you know, all of that kind of thing. So, all right, who, like both of your stories are so different. I don't even know where to start with between Chris and Cass. So who wants to go? Chris, Chris, go right ahead. Totally opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's do the total yeah, opposite so. and then we'll do the in-between. How about that? Okay. Yeah, so Justin and your story would, was our birth like idea that we wrote down with Heidi, right? That's how really? we stuff to go and it didn't, I couldn't have gone more <laughs> sideways. So yeah, my wife is just super, super headstrong. Yeah. yeah. She's stubborn. She's very stubborn. She's super researcher. She knew exactly what she wanted to do and she throughout the whole pregnancy, right? Before we got pregnant, we eliminated chemicals from our home. You know, we started kind of focusing on prayer maybe a little bit more than we had in the past. Essential oils, anything that she thought. Oh, the essential oils. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I'm, and I've become a fan, which might be the most um, just, yeah, disappointing or shameful thing of this whole story. Un- we've got um, like 38 dispensers. What's a dispenser? No. Diffusers. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Diffuser. Oh, we have, like, we have oh. diffusers in every room. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, so, so fun. So she, she took every step. Anything that, whether it was quackery or there was science behind it, didn't really matter if it wasn't going to be detrimental to our lifestyle or our home or anything, she was going to try it. And I really respected that. She wanted to have a natural birth. And that was our plan to do everything that we kind of, we could do. And the background, I think I was like knowing our journey. I didn't expect anything to go the way that we had planned or be easy, but I was, I was hopeful that it would. And I was going to do whatever I could to support that. So why did she want a natural birth? Because it's so much, there's a lot of science about how much better it is for the baby, right? So I think... My takeaway from listening to your wife, too, was that she was she had heard about how much the interventions could disrupt nursing. Yes. And that that was was something that was a really big big for her. Yeah, Yeah. it was it was huge. And she's you know, she's had surgeries. So she she wanted to try to eliminate any type of stress on the baby and any of that potential for additional risk factors to come into play. And that all stood, that, that that went a little bit sideways kind of early on. So she, when she went for her, just whenever they do the gestation, it was like around twenty seven weeks. Yeah, yeah. Tests, she like had passed all of them, but the last one, and she missed it by like two points. And so she kind of had it, but she never went on medication. She always kind of controlled it with with her diet, and she didn't really have to alter her diet too much. So so that was a good thing. But that was kind of like the first like it wasn't a misstep, but it was the first thing that we didn't plan on happening. Yeah. Right. And, I, and like, just for everyone listening, it's like the very first thing that you're like, oh, they're going to push in an early induction right. or so. C-section or whatever. Yeah. And and her her. So not our the, the physician that helped us kind of get to where we were. 
but her doctor at that point had even art like after that had thrown out like scheduling a c-section and she's the most anti right that wasn't part of what we wanted to do and she was very firm she has no problem being direct or being firm or speaking her mind which which i love about her uh, you know in addition to so many other things but she was always um and they she built a really good relationship with her doctor because they would banter back and forth and she's like that's you know that's not that's not part of our part of our deal so when heidi came over and we wrote down like what our birth story was i remember it very vividly when you were like tell me what you what what you want your birth to be yeah. and she was like i think and i want to do this and i had to like stop her and be like don't think just let's like what yeah you we had do. to like redo it yeah because, because she already had a little bit of that doubt kind of creeping in and i totally get what like she's way stronger than i could ever be she's the fiercest like lover and she's just and i mean like a lover of people and lover she's just she's a beast right and i don't have that strength so i wanted to give her that like just what whatever you let, let, let's make it happen or let's just throw it out in the universe and see what happens so we we got that we knew what we wanted to do we we're gonna go in and but we're not going to get in, induced, right? We're going to go into to labor on our own. And, and let me inter, interject yeah, right absolutely. here too. Like when I was at your house too, like one of the things, I don't know if this ever happened with Kelly, but one of the things that was happening with Jessica was that those previous losses were all that grief came right back to the mm. surface because it's like, you know, those are many labors, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So one thing we didn't say earlier <clears throat> that I think it's important for people to understand once you have a miscarriage, at least for us, and the, or, or, I'll just say me, I won't speak for Kelly. Even up till it, till till the baby is born, you always have that, that back of your mind. I mean, you're you're scared. You know brutal. what? You know what? List until he or she is there and and they're breathing and they're okay. Like that that fear just will mm-hmm. never ever yep. leave you. And I just for the listeners that have gone through it, that you're not alone in that. That's that, that's natural. Yeah, thanks for saying that, Justin. And I think it's so part of our story. It's important to know that our, the the loss prior, right, our last one, my wife was at a cupcake making class with my mom, who had recently moved to Fort Mill from Florida. So my parents relocated up here to be closer to us. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, wow. it was really cool that they did that. And so they were having like a bonding day, right? And she's texting me, and she's like, "Oh my god, I, I think I'm losing the child." And I'm like, "Well, like, what, you know, how do you, how do we?" how do I navigate that? What do we do? And when we went to the, to the doctor the next day, they basically told her flat out, they were like, you were laboring for about 12 hours, right. To, to try to naturally have this happen. So she'd experienced that. And I think it was that night when we were talking where that, that was the first time it came to her head. She's like, Oh my God, when I go into labor, am I going to think about that situation? Uh... Right. Which is, smart that's like that's the intelligence side of her brain saying like hey be ready because this is coming because it makes sense that that could happen but then there's the part that's like god why can you just like keep that locked away somewhere so we can focus on other things right but unfortunately that's not the way that's not the way things work so we we had our plan and as we got Every time we went to an ultrasound they were like oh he's seven pounds or he's gonna be 10 pounds for all this stuff and it's funny how we can you know, we can send a camera to Mars to take pictures, but we can't really tell how big a baby is in utero, right? Like right. there's a, like a pound difference. I mean, the 10% it's, variation, right? It's I could not agree with that anymore. Right. Like, <laughs> so we're kind of going through that and her physician is like, we're probably going to schedule a C-section and we're really fighting against that. And then basically what happened is, I can't remember when it was, it was close by, but she had low amniotic fluid. So it was below oh, okay. the 0.2 or whatever the threshold is. Yeah. You have to have like, each pocket has to have at least two, two centimeters, centimeters of, of fluid. fluid right. And she didn't have any pockets. Right. So, so they said. Right. You know, Which, I mean, it's yeah. so hard. Again, we don't know what we're I mean, looking at. Because we can see it on there, right? We can tell there's not a lot, but it looks like I'm not a doctor, obviously. It, it could have been a map of Asia. I wouldn't have known. It was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> but at that know. ultrasound, they couldn't find any pockets that had more than two centimeters right. of fluid. They right. were all very low. So we, our due date was the 31st of August. And they had recommended if we weren't in labor to do an induction. I want to say I'm like the 23rd. Mm-hmm. And after that appointment, they moved that Friday appointment to Tuesday. Tuesday at 1 p.m. 1 or 2 p.m. And it was what I tried to like really. So it ended up being 10 days yes, prior, right. 10 day, an induction 10 days yep. early. And I was trying to say like, hey, it's all for like, right. The goal is to have a 
healthy baby. So if this is what they're saying to do, let's go and we'll do everything. We literally for a week did everything possible. <laughs> I mean, we anything done on the internet or anywhere that you could read, we did to try to get her into labor. Like eating the prunes, the whole, the whole nine yards, all I that mean, stuff. Uh, yeah, I might have gotten some nettles off the internet. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened there. Um, raspberry to red raspberry leaf tea. Yes, There's a lot yes. of stuff going on. So we... Jeez, I'm trying to, there was something that morning that really threw me off. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, I just booked a last minute massage. That, I think you have just some lady's house in Elizabeth or something. I don't know what it was, but we went and she had a massage and then we couldn't feel like I and was then a starving. chiropractor. That, that's what it was. It wasn't a massage. It was a chiropractor. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. So she okay. had an adjustment. And then I was like, well, I have to do this stuff for work. So can you come back and like... And we couldn't, and then we had to like eat. Hell, the whole thing was weird. So we figured that all out. We got the par- car parked, packed up, went, she got her adjustment done, and then we went right to the hospital. So I did the same thing. I don't know if it, I was at Presbyterian. Yeah. So they put a little spot, blinkers on, go upstairs, right? Should meet the nurse. Eighth, I go eighth floor. Yep. Eight, eight, <laughs> eight 28. I, can't, I should know this. I have it written down somewhere. <laughs> so get Jess in the room. They're not super busy that night, which, but it was a full moon. So I figured, you know, we'd probably be in like a hallway, but we weren't, which was cool. And I run down to get the rest of the bags. And by the time I get up, the mood of all the nurses has already completely changed. Wow. And something has happened. There's no doubt something has oh, happened. Wow. No way. Yeah. Did your heart um, just drop? Yeah, a little bit. I was yeah. like, because Jess is, she, I mean, she speaks her mind, right? She's a very, she's she's forthright in her feelings and her opinions and usually in a very like tactful way. You know, she's respectful. She's a sweet Southern girl. And I, I, she looked at me, she's like, oh, that nurse hates me. She's pissed. And I was like, okay, like what happened? So the first thing they did is try to give her an IV. She said, I'm going to little delay the IV. Like there's no medical need for me to have the IV. And that set the nurse off, right? Right out of the, literally within the first five minutes of being there. So I'm like, this is going to suck. <laughs> like, I don't want to, I'm going to just, can I go home and play Xbox or something? <laughs> is this how it's going to be? <laughs> um, but the doctor came in and Jess was very articulate based on, I'm sure, uh, um, in a good part to conversations with Heidi about, you know, it's not medically necessary. Let's delay it as long as we can. She wants to be on the birthing ball. She wants to be in the tub. Right. All these things. So doctor's like, cool. But if there's any signs of like us going to the next level. Were you not there? Were, was this another one? Oh, I get there. Yeah. yeah okay. she, oh, no, no, she, sorry, there. I was waiting. She gets see. there. And okay, she okay. Gets I was there. Okay. And then she gets <laughs> back. <laughs> okay, you, you, I was, I was trying to ask, yeah. did you miss another one? Yeah, I was like, no, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I one put, for three kind of Put things? it this way. I made up for Justin and Kelly's birth with Chris and Jessica. Awesome, yeah. And about... She actually could have gone to Orlando and then came back. Came back. Still. Yeah. Three times over. Yeah, probably, right? Okay, yeah. All right. No, no. So she was a big part of it. So No, but what I one of the things that we should list tell listeners is that one of the things I had coached Jessica and Chris on is that inductions can take up to five days. Right. And Jessica had had a conversation with her provider and he said, that will never, that's not going to happen to you. That'll never happen. (laughs) You know? And I just said, okay, well, I'm just letting everybody know that like, I'm going to come, like my role is still to be with you in active labor, but I still am going to come often, Mm -hmm. you know, and just Check in, check out, make sure the room and the environment are good. But wow. but I'm not going to sleep at the hospital for right. five right. days. Right. Yeah. Okay, I guess I see now. Okay. Thank you for listening to Birth Story. My goal is you will walk away from each episode with a clear picture of how labor and delivery might go, and that you will feel empowered by the end of your 